How's it going guys? I'm Robert from Machado Visuals and today I'm going over what's probably my most used feature of the Siconic C800, matching color temperature. Now this one gets a little sciencey and there's a lot to unpack so get ready to take some notes. This is probably my favorite use case of having a color meter since I'm able to dial in my light's color temp to match any ambient environment. This is most practical for interviews since I'm able to go into any location and match to whatever's already there and it makes interviews look supernatural. Oftentimes I'm asked, oh, did you use a window light? No, I didn't, just really accurate and well-placed light. To match sources, I prefer using RGB LEDs that have a plus or minus green adjustment. Now, whenever I'm in the market for buying new lights, this is a huge consideration for me. This is because bicolor LEDs are only half the battle, and to figure out why, we need to understand how colored LEDs work. Traditional bicolor LEDs have two sets of chips, one warm set and another cool set. When you're dialing in the color temperature, the perceived color is really just a blend of the two sets of LEDs. The issue with that is that a color temperature's white point is not linear. It follows what's called a black body curve or Planckian locus. The Planckian locus is a curved line on a chromaticity diagram that defines black body radiation as the temperature changes. A black body radiator is an object that emits light as it becomes heated, such as coils in a toaster, incandescent light bulbs, the sun, etc. Now I know that was a mouthful, but the Planckian locus is essentially a scale that describes correlated color temperature, or CCT. This is actually how color temperature is calculated by finding the closest point to the light source's white point on the Planckian locus. Any deviation from this curve is your delta UV, basically a green or magenta shift. A positive delta UV means the light is leaning towards green, and a negative delta UV means the light is shifting towards magenta. Circling back to LEDs, traditional bicolor lights simply mix two different LEDs linearly, but as I stated before, a CCT's white point does not travel linearly. It travels along the curve. This means that as you adjust most bicolor lights, you'll introduce some sort of green or magenta shift. The best example of this is shown in a previous video I did with my Quasar crossfades and sky panel. Since the Quasars were bicolor, it introduced a crazy magenta shift when set to 3200 Kelvin. This is why bicolored lights are not enough. Sure, you can correct them with gels, but this is now why I prefer using RGB lights so that you can correct the delta UV deviation on the fixture itself. This is personally why I love using sky panels because they produce very accurate CCTs with very minimal green or magenta shift. Now that we're done with our science lesson, back to matching color temperature. These two shots were filmed at entirely different times of day, one during the afternoon at 3 p.m. and another during night at 8 p.m. Since this was the scene I wanted to match, I took a color reading of the window and got these measurements. Say for example, your schedule didn't accommodate to shoot in the day, so you had to shoot at night, hence the night for day. Shooting night for day is actually really helpful since you're essentially controlling the sun and you don't have to worry about gaining extra sun or losing the sun. Everything remains at a constant and you can shoot on through. By nightfall, I threw up an 8x frame with a silk diffusion over the window and keyed it with the sky panel S60. I knew I wasn't going to get nearly as much output as the midday sun, so I set the sky panel to 100% and switched the FX9 to the high base ISO of 4000 EI. By the way, this is another really great use case scenario of the dual native ISO on the FX9. Because the high base is so sensitive, we can now light entire night for day interiors with a single LED fixture. Mind blown. To dial in the light, I switched my color meter to delta mode, which tells me the difference from my previous reading. I'll adjust the sky panel settings until the CCT and plus minus green are as close to zero as possible, and the light should match. For fill, I used the 300D with the spotlight mount to hit a 4x bounce to replicate a window from the other room. In this example, I'm using CCT and delta UV to recreate light, but the same principle applies when matching sources. To sum up, use an RGB light that offers a plus minus green adjustment and meter until your CCT and delta UV readings match. I'm a big fan of using meters. They eliminate the guesswork so you're as accurate as possible rather than just being close enough. Yes, I know not everyone owns RGB lights, but you should be able to use this method to help you on jobs where you do have the ability to print out the appropriate tools. Our craft is a blend of art and science and it's up to us to determine what feels right for the story. Also, shout out to Joel for sending out some of these S-Log3 LETs. I used them in this video to gray the FX9 shots. If you want to take a peep at them, link is in the description. Hopefully this video was helpful in some way, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.